Hello and uh, welcome back. So session six is my absolute favorite session. But before we get into that, uh, ho hopefully your, your period of time where you were eating healthy, you were dieting, exercising, all those sort of things went extremely well for you and you made some good notes and are noticing some differences based on that. Again, if you're not one that has a good diet and you don't normally exercise, maybe you've had a little bit of a crash and you just need to stick with it for a little bit longer. But in the long run, I promise you, it's going to make you feel so much better. So session six, th th this is my absolute favorite. Th this one can change you physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially, in every single way and can have a huge impact on your life and I think can make a tremendous difference in helping you in your recovery. Okay, so, so we're, we're going to get right in to the skill, which is going to be something called a spiritual discipline. And, and that is just a way for you to be able to connect with God. So here it is. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hope the diet and exercise was a positive experience. Like I said, some, sometimes when you do things that your body's not used to and you start to make adjustments and changes, it'll fight back. So there's a, there's a good chance you did great with your diet and exercise this week and felt a little worse, but looking at the long run and the end goal, keep, keep it up. Um, you, you'll get to the point where it'll be super helpful. Um, so this week we've either talked about or going to talk about spiritual disciplines and, uh, you know, just having an important spiritual life. Um, you know, the wellness chain incorporates your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being, and they all interact with one another. You know, I was 17 when I came into a personal relationship with Christ. Um, it was the best decision I've ever made. You know, it, growing up, I felt like I had to work my way to heaven and then realized, hey, I'm not a perfect person. Heaven's a perfect place. I certainly don't deserve to go there and knew that God sent his son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sins. And, you know, when I used to feel like I just need to be a good enough person and God will let me into heaven, I realize now that I was saying, you know, Jesus really died for nothing. Like, he didn't need to die on a cross because I, I don't need that. Like, I can just be a good enough person. But now I realize, like, Every, everything is based on what he did for me. So someday when I die, if God says, Mike, why should I let you in here? I'm not going to say, you know, I've helped people with anxiety. Uh, you know, I've done people's funerals as a pastor in a church. I've done a lot of counseling to help people because what I'm saying is, God, you have to let me in. I deserve it. You know, it's going to be quite the opposite. I'm going to say, you know, what? I, I don't deserve it. I wasn't perfect. I made mistakes. But when I was 17, I made a decision to ask you into my heart, to forgive me of my sins. I started a relationship with you. And the Bible promises me that because of that, I get to spend eternity with you. And that, that's been so healthy for my anxiety because I know I don't have to work my way to heaven. Um, and anyways, you know, hopefully you come to that decision in your life. Um, it, it's been so important to me. But if not, uh, you know, we're all at different places on that journey. You know, ju just really at some point in your life, focus on that spirituality part of your wellness chain. And, you know, the skill this week is what's called a spiritual discipline. And, you know, th th there's a list in the guide of different things you can do. Um, but so, so you're going to take one of those and just spend 10 minutes a day on it. And, you know, one of the ones I would encourage you w would be the prayer. And one of the things that I think we don't do with prayer enough is to listen. So we go to God and we, and we say, you know, he, here's all the things that I want. Please help me with. Um, let, let me pray for these people about this. We say amen and we walk away and that's it. But with prayer, I, I want you to, you know, if you're going to do 10 minutes, pray for five. You, you know, ask for forgiveness if you need to. Thank God for the blessings that you have. Um, and then the last five, just sit there in silence and, and just ask the question, God, is there anything you want to say to me? Is there anything you want me to know? Pull out a Bible, find a favorite verse, um, and, and just concentrate on that and meditate on that. And uh, just let it be a quiet time, a peaceful time, and let these spiritual disciplines like God allow him to come speak into your life. 
So if you have any questions, need any help, you know how to reach out to me. Um, but can't wait to see what, what God's going to do with this. And we'll talk more next week. So, you know, I know some of you I am talking to can really relate to what was said in that video. Some of you, all of us are in a different place on our spiritual journey. Uh, but, you know, as some of you know, uh, you know, my, my background, I have a master's in counseling. I also have a master's of divinity. So, so I went to seminary, studied the Bible, and, and have been a pastor in large churches. And, uh, you know, w w one, th one thing I know for sure, beyond a doubt, is that I can promise you is God created you for a purpose and God loves you. Um, he, he, he loves you more than you could ever imagine. And, you know, in the midst of your anxiety, in the midst of your depression, he's there, he's beside you, he's walking with you through this. And it may have even been like an issue of allowing you to be led to this point in your life to listen to this video and have the opportunity to know him, to understand him, and to love him. Um, so, so Karl Barth was one of the top theologians back in the 50s and 60s and wrote tremendous like knowledge on Christianity and the Bible and all about God. And he, he was speaking at a college. One of the students said, like, you know, Mr. Barth, is there any way you could narrow down all your knowledge and all your works and all your writings into something that's easy for us to remember. And he stepped up to the microphone and he said, I sure can. He said, this is one thing that I know. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And, and everything that I've learned really like boils down into that and loves not just me, but loves you as well. And once a personal relationship with you can, can change your life, um, not, not only here on earth, but for eternity as well. And, and just encourage you to, to make that decision to follow Jesus, to follow Christ, and, and know that none of us are perfect. And, and that's why, you know, Jesus sent his son, John 3, 16, to die on a cross for us, because he loves us so much and wants us to spend eternity with him in heaven. Um, so today, as, as I'm doing this video and speaking, it's Christmas Eve. And, uh, you know, just thinking tomorrow we celebrate um, the day of Jesus's birth and, and the tremendous sacrifice because Jesus loves us so much. And, and the Bible says anybody who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved and we can have that eternal life. And uh, so, so what I'm going to do before we jump into the notebook is I'm just going to share a short prayer. So if you've never accepted Christ and, and want that relationship with him, want to follow him, and, and you know, you don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to have every little detail worked out. It's just saying, you know what, God, I, I believe that you sent your son because you love me so much to die on the cross, and I want that relationship with you. So if you'll close your eyes with me, and we'll just say the short prayer, and again, can impact your anxiety, your depression, and your eternity. So, so let's pray. Jesus, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for me. And I believe that you created me for a purpose and that you love me and I love you too. And I pray that you come into my heart, forgive me of my wrongs and help me to walk with you every day and know someday I'll be in heaven with you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So that's awesome. If any of you prayed that prayer for the first time, you know, th th this is one of the exciting things and one of the purposes also of doing this program. Now, now as a Christian counselor, you, you know, the, there's two different sides that people can go down. You know, so some people feel like, hey, you know what, if you're, you're anxious, you're depressed, just pray a little harder and it'll go away. But, you know, as a counselor, like I know it's, it's chemical imbalances. So you're not going to say to somebody with acid reflux, just go pray a little harder. Your acid reflux is going to go away. You know, there's cer certain things you need to do to balance those chemicals out. And it's the same thing with anxiety and depression. So as a Christian counselor, God is a huge piece. He's so important. That relationship can help us in so many ways. But just like a medical doctor, God's given, you know, counselors, therapists, psychiatrists, 
the skills that they need to be able to use to help people while we're here, you know, waiting till our time's up and we get to spend eternity with him in heaven. So, um, so, so with that, uh, also, you, you know, if, if you made, if you prayed that prayer, um, I would love to hear from you. I would love to pray for you. So, so in the description of these videos, anxietycoachmike at gmail.com, I would love it if you would just send me an email and, and let me know that, that hey, you know, I, I prayed that prayer. Let me, let me know how the program's helping you. I'll also go onto the Facebook group page and, and would love to hear um, all about, you know, how the program's helping and what it's doing for you. Okay, so, so let's go to session number six. And uh, so this is on medication and again, spiritual health. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I can't prescribe medications. I've worked with a lot of psychiatrists. I've been to a lot of psychiatric appointments with clients and, and have seen all kinds of different medicines and different things people have used and tried, some with great success, some with no success. Um, so so, so what, what, what a lot of the medication part of this is, it's just to serve as a guide. So, so if you go to a psychiatrist or you talk to your family doctor and consider medication, that, that at least you have a little bit of knowledge, it can go in there, you know, not, not totally clueless and, and maybe understand a little bit about what they may prescribe or talk to you about. Um, again, I, I've never taken medication. I think in my story, I, I took one pill one time and horrible side effects and threw it in the trash. Um, so, so, you know, the skills that I'm teaching you and that we're learning, well, like for me, that's what I needed. You know, for other people, everybody's different. So, so I've seen people have tremendous success on the medication with the therapy. Um, and that, that, that may be you. And again, just like everything else, feel free to try things and see what works specifically for you. All right. So point number one is for some people, medication is necessary. So, you, you know, you, you got chemicals all completely out of whack in your brain. So I've definitely met people that had horrible depression or horrible anxiety, and, and they literally could not even focus. You know, I, I would say a sentence if I told them, hey, repeat what I just said, that they couldn't do it. You know, so, so they, they were at the point where they, they couldn't even participate in therapy, you know, until some of the brain chemicals got balanced out. And for people like that, you know, obviously like medication is a necessary step. And I've seen people on medication that have gone through the program and have come off medication at the direction and under the care of their doctor. Um, so so, so there, there's a lot of different ways that this could go. But, you know, as you think about medication, again, I just want to give you some real basic knowledge. Um, so again, any, anything that you do with your medication, work with your doctor, work with the psychiatrist, as they would be the experts in this area. But number two, research shows that therapy is more beneficial than medication in the long run. So, so you know, as people are giving kind of their review of how much the medication is helping them and their views of how much therapy is helping them, therapy actually outranks medication. Um, so, so take the skills that you're learning seriously, like use them and uh, practice them even when you're feeling good. You know, so, so, so if I was, somebody pointed a gun at me, I'm probably not gonna react as well as a police officer because they're practicing, you know, what, what, what to do in that situation where I'm not. So, so if you're practicing the skills when, when a big stressor happens or something comes up and, and you use a breathing technique or a muscle relaxation technique or mindfulness, like your body's gonna to respond to it so much quicker because you've been practicing it. Uh, more people give up on medication than therapy. Uh, just a statistic, you know, a lot of people just feel like it would be so nice if I could just take a pill and all this would go away. And in general, that just doesn't happen. Um, you know, making sure if you're gonna stop medication, so, so maybe this program at this point, you're saying, hey, I, you've been on medication, you're feeling really good and you're thinking, hey, I'm just gonna stop this like talk to your doctor first and, and do that like under their care, their direction, and they can give you advice on that. And, and I will say, you know, I, I would encourage your doctor to allow you to come off super slowly. You know, so, so, so I always say, hey, let's set a six month goal. So let, let's say you're on 10 milligrams of something, you know, cutting it down to maybe 
eight milligrams for a couple weeks and then going down to six for a couple weeks and, and just do a real slow process. And, and you know, th th there's really no hurry for it to happen. But, but again, you use your doctor's direction for that. Uh, so you can see number three, uh, there's different types of medication for depression. Um, so 25, 30 years ago, if you went to a doctor, so, you know, said, can you give me a medication for depression? They had about 15 different choices. All right, so, so today there's over a hundred different medications that the doctor could potentially just prescribe for your depression. I, I've had uh, clients I've worked with go, now they even have like DNA type swab tests where they took a swab of their mouth and it matches up like what medications are most likely to have the biggest benefit for them. Um, but looking at that chart, so SSRIs, um, th they seem to be like the, the starting point. It targets the serotonin in your brain. They have the smallest amount of side effects. It helps you like participate in therapy, doesn't hinder that. Um, so medicines like Celexa, Lexapro, Paxil, Zoloft, um, and, and people, the majority of people tend to do well on those. And that, that's kind of a, a good like stopping point too. So they don't need to keep increasing things, changing things. Um, and uh, so, so the SSRI, now if the SSRI doesn't work, normally doctors will kind of go down the list. So if you look at the next step, SNRI, so it targets both serotonin and norepinephrine. So Effexor, Pristique, Cymbalta. Um, now, a, a, again, so, some of these are helping many people, giving them their lives back, but, but it's one of those things normally as you go down this list, there's more side effects attached to it. And again, everybody's body is different. <laughs> so, so somebody may have a side effect with the SSRI that they don't with the SNRI. So, so again, it's just a generalization. You know, so the atypical tricyclic MAOIs, again, a, as you're going down that list, you know, the, the medications are targeting more things in your brain, which is more likely to produce more side effects. Um, so number four, there's different types of medication for anxiety. So because anxiety and depression are so closely related and the chemical imbalances in your brain that any of the depression meds could also be prescribed for anxiety. So there's over a hundred different anxiety meds. Um, one of the things that they add into that is the benzodiazepines. They just call them benzos. So they're like the volumes, the Xanax. And so I, I will say like when, when I first went for an MRI and they wanted to scan my brain, um, like the first time I went, I completely like panicked. <laughs> they put me in the tube and I was like, get me out of here. Like, I, you know, no, no, get, get me out, get me out. So they got me out and uh, the doctor gave me a volume. Um, and, and I didn't know what I was taking, but I, I knew I took it and, and I got the MRI done. And I was just at, like in la la land. I was at peace. I felt good. And afterwards, I remember going home and, and this was after probably two month and a half, two months of feeling absolutely horrible with anxiety and panic. And, and for the first time, like I, I felt good. I felt great. And, and I remember going to my mom and saying, like, I, I don't know what I took before that MRI, but like problem solved, like, you know, th th this is great. So, so I, you know, I remember talking to the doctor and the doctor's like, yeah, you, you can't take these long-term, you know, so, so you're on 10 milligrams now, which made you feel great. And it wasn't 10, like the benzos are real small. So it's like one milligram, um, you know, so, so one milligram, that's probably going to help you for a week. And then it's going to like slowly build up a tolerance. And then next week you're going to need two milligrams. And then two weeks after that, you're going to need four and they're very addicting and like these will ruin your life. <laughs> so, so, so it, it was one of those things where it makes you feel good, but it, it's just not a long-term solution. Um, and, and honestly, like, I'm glad I had to go through these skills and learn these things and didn't rely on just a medication. Um, so Buspirin, Buspirin is, is another common medication just for anxiety. Um, and, and, and again, a lot of these are just uh, a guide uh, for you to be aware. So, so number five, stop your nicotine and alcohol intake. Again, these have a tremendous impact um, on you and your anxiety and depression. And again, phase those things out and just see the difference it makes. You know, initially it may make you feel better as you get a cigarette, you know, or, you know, a, as you drink, but, you know, in the long term, it, it, it hurts you and only feeds into your anxiety and depression. So other drugs, um, 
you know, the, the Z drugs are like sleep meds and they can have an impact on your anxiety and depression. So, so you wanna be careful with those, use them sparingly. The CBTI that we talked about last time, you know, that, that is a much healthier way to go about it and, and give that a shot. So you can see the effects on therapy. Um, so, so most of those like can be helpful, you know, a, a, as you go through therapy and make you be able to focus a little bit more, you, you know, again, again, as you go down and the benzos and, you, you know, just put you in la la land, um, you, you know, doesn't help. You know, I, I work with people on medical marijuana that has, was making them feel pretty good, but, you know, it, it just makes it harder for them to really like use the skills, learn the skills, which is a much healthier route for them. All right, also the research at the bottom of page 19 on the different classes of medications. Um, so, you know, if, if you have a phobia, like therapy is gonna be the way to go with, with that, like medication isn't gonna help you a whole lot with that. And, you know, the panic disorder, you know, a lot of you are here most likely because of generalized anxiety disorder. You know, so, so when I work with clients with anxiety, I would say eight to nine out of every 10 of them, like get classified as generalized anxiety disorder. Uh, but again, use this all as a guide, you know, talk to your doctor. So there's final considerations on page 20. This is just for your reference, you know, to, to give you a little bit of knowledge, but always talk to your doctor about these things. Um, so the benzos and the Z drugs will have the immediate effect. Again, the, the volume was the benzo that, you know, half hour after I took it, I was feeling great. Um, but, you know, that, that's not a long-term solution and it's not a healthy way to go. Um, all the other medications, so, you know, if the doctor would put you on Zoloft or some type of medication, it, it takes a good three weeks before you, like, really know what's going to happen. So you may take it for a week and say, you know, th this really isn't helping and like, I'm, I'm not gonna do this anymore. But, but if you really wanna see if there's gonna be a benefit, you know, it, it would be a good three weeks. So side effects that start at the beginning, a lot of times will go away, you, you know, a, after those three weeks. So, you know, again, j just things to talk to your doctor about and keep in mind that, you know, just because you took something for three days and now you're having trouble sleeping or you're getting a headache and those sort of things that it doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna be long-term. All right, and then number six, uh, find a spiritual discipline that works for you. Um, so there's great volumes and books out there on the different spiritual disciplines. I just added a few in here. So meditation and picking a, a scripture or Bible verse and focusing on it, you know, prayer, fasting, reading the Bible, worship, so, you know, singing hymns, singing worship songs, confession. I remember in seminary, I did a thing where I, I wrote out, everything that I could remember in my entire life that I had done wrong. And I probably spent, I'm going to say five hours, six hours, like just in, with a tablet, you know, starting like, okay, well, let me think back to the first time I didn't listen to my mom or dad or, or something that I did and think about first grade, think about second grade. And I had a good, I had a lot of pages <laughs> filled up and things that I'd done in my life and had another student that was willing to just listen to me, like confess all these things and just tell them, get it off my chest. And it was a very freeing thing to just get it all out there and, hey, I'm not perfect. And just for that other student to support me and encourage me and remind me that despite all those things, God still loved me. Um, so, so you can see the benefits of doing a spiritual discipline um, th there's also some great verses there. So if you're looking for a verse to look at, you, you know, we, we talked in one of the sessions about our thoughts and, and that the Bible's full of things about the things that we think about and the things on our mind. So, so there's lots of Bible verses there uh, for you to go to that may be helpful. Um, but, but I think a great starting point for the spiritual disciplines, as I discussed uh, in, in the skill, it, it, it is to just have some silence. So, so do some prayer and then just listen to God. And, and you can see, uh, it says, God, what are some things you want me to know about? And then there's a blank. So you might put my anxiety, my depression. So, so just find a quiet place, you know, grab a Bible if you want, and, and just talk to God and say, God, what are some things you want me to know about my anxiety? And just sit there quietly. 
and, and see if God gives you some impressions, some, you know, some, some type of direction and knowledge and wisdom into that and a place for you to like take some notes. So, so I think that's a great place to start. Um, again, any of the other spiritual disciplines to, to build on and, you know, just like diet and exercise, you know, making a, this a part of your daily life. Um, so, so I know, let's see if I can pull this up on my phone. I have a, there's a little app I'll listen to on the way to work. Uh, let's see if you can see the, it's kind of like the red B right there. It's called the Bible in one year. And, uh, you know, so, so, so it's made by a pastor. He reads uh, some from the Old Testament, some from the New Testament, gives a little commentary on it to, to help, like, how does that apply to our lives? And, you know, it's about a 20 minute drive for me to the college. And, you know, normally that, that's about how long it lasts. And by the end of the year, he's read through the whole Bible and has really encourage you, help you, but there's tons of stuff like that out there. Um, and, and I rotate every other year. So one year I'll read through the whole Bible, um, or if I'm using the app, listening to the whole Bible, you know, other times I'll, I'll just go in a book like the Psalms and, and I'll just focus on just a couple verses and pray about them and slow down. Um, so, so, so it's just finding out what works for you. Um, so your homework, continue to use all the skills. Uh, discuss any medication changes with your doctor, you know, pick one of the spiritual disciplines. Again, a good starting point is just sitting quietly with God and, and getting some wisdom from him. And, uh, you know, practice these spiritual disciplines, uh, set aside at least 10 minutes every day this week. And again, just see what a difference it makes and, and pray, you know, really, really just in prayer, listening to the hymns, you know, whatever discipline you would like to do. And, and then what I really want you to do if you turn over to page 22, this is a list of verses of what the Bible says, how God sees you. Um, so, so, so I want you to read down through those and pick one that like really, really sticks out to you. Um, you know, I, I, I love the verse uh, Ephesians 3, 16 to 19, that tells me that God loves me beyond a love. Uh, God loves me beyond understanding. And, and that like how much God loves me, like I physically can't even understand that. And, you know, so anytime I feel lonely or anytime I feel unloved, like I can always go back to that verse that I know I have a heavenly father and a God that loves me beyond what I could ever understand. So for you, you might pick the one that says you're free in Christ. You might pick the one that says you're a new creation. You might pick the one where Jesus said that you're, you're his friend. Um, and, and so look down through there and I want you to memorize one of the things that no matter what happens in life, you can all, always fall back on this verse and say, beyond all else, this is what God thinks of me. And uh, so, so, so I hope that encourages you, helps you, changes you, and I can't wait to see you next week.